have a vision of a panel discussion creating an argument that would help bring answers to the questions of the church today. And I think we're going to give opportunity for the table to introduce themselves and then we're going to go forth and start a fight. Because that's what it almost ended up being yesterday until the first assistant tore the church up. Good God Almighty. I'm going to preach it this Sunday. Don't lose your brand. But let's not talk about that because we might get the shout again. So starting from Josiah on the end, grab the microphone, introduce yourself, tell everybody where you're from and what you do. Yo, how y'all doing? My name is Josiah. I'm a musician here in Chicago, 22 years old. Right. <laughs> what you play? Oh, oh, I, well, oh, I play uh, drums. Okay, all right, drums, keys. They, I'm a member of Evangelistic Praise House. My mom is a pastor, Pastor Julia Porter Maddox. Some of know. I'm Rico Nicholas. Here from Chicago, Illinois, um, come from Prayer and Faith Outreach Ministries. I'm 26 years old, uh, play drums, uh, currently touring all over the world, you know, living the dream, you know, being the light to the world. So that's what I'm doing. Who you play for? All right, um, right now I'm currently with Kendrick Lamar, Kanye West, 2 Chains, a couple other people, so. Just, yeah. Uh, my name is Curtis Lindsay. I'm 34 years old from Chicago, Illinois. Um, my pastor is Bishop Larry Roberts, senior from Trinity All Nations Church. Um, I play keys, organ, um, got production, CL Keys music. I'm currently playing for Marvin Sapp. Praise the Lord, everybody. No, it's good. My name is Michelle Prather. Um, my pastor is Pastor San Franklin of the Kingdom Love Worship Center out of Nashville. And I am a 14 year member uh, with Kirk Carr, Kirk Carr Singers. So those doors open up many other doors to be able to tour and uh, bless people and bless the world with this gift. And uh, I do honor Bishop and First Lady uh, for allowing me this time and I'm ready for the fight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ready, I'm Jennifer and I'm 44, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm Jennifer Jones from here, Chicago, Illinois. Bishop Brandon Jacobs is my pastor. I serve as the minister of music at New Zion Temple. Um, I'm an actress and singer. God has provided plenty of platforms for me to utilize these talents. I traveled the world for five years touring the Color Purple Broadway. Um, and so God has been amazing. I'm 37 years old since we get into ages. I don't know. <laughs> My name is Albert Simmons. I'm the I'm a pastor, First Paradox Baptist Church here in the great city of Chicago. Um, I've been singing all my life. Um, don't I have any great stories, but uh, if I feel stuck, I'm gonna say it's a spirit of deception in here. <laughs> Give me the cross, amen, and we're gonna shout, amen. Good afternoon, I am Daniel Smith, the senior pastor of New St. Matthew Missionary Baptist Church here in Chicago, Illinois. I've been singing all of my life, I'm 20 plus year member of Dr. Walt Whitman and the Soul Children of Chicago. So I am very happy to be here on this afternoon. Let's give all of our panelists a great big hand. The ones who gave their age and the ones who did not. So let's start this. As the church has changed and I believe um, as I look through the door or through the, one, through, through the audience, uh, there is a, a vast number of old school and new school in the building, which is, which is a great bridge, uh, a great connection to have old and new in the same room. All old school, wave your hand. The My Soul Love Jesus Saints, wave your hand. All right, all right, all right. And, and now, now, the, the Ty Trippett Kirk Franklin worshipers, wave your hand. 
Hey, hey, hey. All right, so we got, we got a good number of um, choir robes, nurses' uniforms with the white hats and, uh, and the, um, you know, the nurses back when we was kids, they wore white shoes where they wouldn't fall like gym shoes. You know, there's new nurses, they wear red bottoms now. So all, all, of, the, all of the white glove usher people in the room, it's time for prayer, wave your hand. That, that's what I want to see, yeah, all right. And in addition to that, we realize that choir robes, uniforms, and stuff are gone. So we're going we're gonna to deal with quite a few of those issues. I think one, coming off the back, um, there was a question that was given to me, and we're going to ask this to Miss Jennifer Jones, who I think is one of the greatest singers that I've heard in a long time. Um, if the worship leader leaves the church, should people get off the praise team? As you know, the praise team is the, are the elite singers today. You know, they don't get in the choir. This is, this is the crew that don't sing in the choir. They got the best voices, but the ones, so, so, so let's, let's that, that's, that's an argument, two arguments it at the is, same time. Because in my house, you sing in the choir and the praise team. You have to do both. You cannot do one without the other. Um, if a worship leader leaves, the praise team should not leave because they weren't there for the worship leader. Now, we do have instances where leaders go and they take people with them if they're building a team. But if these are already members of the church or even joining after that leader, they shouldn't leave. They're not there for the worship leader. They're there for their church, their pastor, their heart. It has nothing to do with the leader leaving. Now, if they choose to leave, then their heart wasn't there in the first place. It's a hard issue. It's a hard issue. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else want to talk on that? Any one of these pastors? Well, uh, the pastor also has to make sure that he's not allowing that leader to build a mini church within the church. Um, he, he cannot just allow a worship leader to monopolize that area of ministry and never infuses himself or herself uh, to know what's going on. Um, I often tell people even that, that not just join the ministry, the uh, praise and worship ministry, but even the church, don't come because of me because I might make you mad. And if, I, if you came because of me and I make you mad, you're going to leave because of me. But if you come because God has planted you here, then no, nobody can pluck you out of here. Nobody can uproot you. So again, as Jennifer has already said, it's about your heart. Somebody how it's a heart issue. Uh, Josiah, should you stay at a church as a musician that you are a member of or leave to be paid for a higher price at another church? Say that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> You're a member of the church that you play at, but the preacher down the street got a bigger price tag or got a bigger pocket. I'm staying at the church I'm a member at. Oh. You gonna stay there? Yeah, absolutely. That's where I'm being fed at. You know, so, yeah. I don't... You're not gonna go to the bigger price? No. I mean, well, you... I mean, money is cool. I mean, I'm gonna make money anywhere. I can make money during a gig, during the weekend. But where I'm being fed matters most. Mm -hmm. My pastor, my covering, and you know. What if you're not being fed? Oh, I'm out of there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're still a member, but you're going to leave for that other dollar. No. I, well, yeah. I, I like how you're doing that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> you love your pastor. It ain't no oil there, right, but right. you love it. Right. You was raised there. You love the, the fellowship. You grow with the kids, the whole bit. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But somebody else got a bigger dollar for you. It's kind of tough. Pass yeah, it to your on, I'm pass it. Pass it to your brother. I got you. So for me, if it was up to me, um, of course, I would love to be fed. But if I'm not being fed, I, you know, I have a life. I have to take care of myself. So I have business decisions to make. So I need to make the best business decision for me that can help me, you know, carry along my journey, you know, to be fed, to find, you know, my place that's fit for me. So that's for me. That's what I would do. Pass it to your brother, Razor. <laughs> Can you repeat the question again? Because it sounded like you uh, asked Curtis, two questions. Curtis, uh, it, it was almost two questions, but let's ask the one. 
will you leave your church for a higher dollar? No. I'm currently doing that now. You know, um, I get offers all the time to play at different churches, but because I'm dedicated and loyal to my church, I love my church, that's where I'm going to be. All right, let me, you all keep the microphone. So, and the young man in the middle, what's your name, sir? Rico. Rico. Yes, sir. Um, you got responsibilities. Yes, sir. Playing as a job. Yes, sir. And a ministry. And a ministry. Yes, sir. I like that. So yes, it's not sir. just a job. Nope. It's a ministry as well. I like it. Yep. Give these musicians a hand. They answered those questions real good. Is it okay to sing secular music as a profession and lead worship in the church? Uh-oh. I feel like he was talking to me. <laughs> so, I am a secular artist. What I do and who I am are two totally, totally different people. I am a secular artist for hire. I sing in clubs, weddings, bar mitzvahs, and then I get up on Sundays, I lead worship. Who I am and what I do are two totally different people. For me, I can say that singing in a club has sometimes drawn more people to me with a need than being sing when singing here in church. Here in church, everybody's hiding what their problem is. People in clubs, they messed up and they know they messed up. So they're willing to come to you and say, I got an issue and there's something in you that's not familiar here. What is it? How can you help me? Can you talk? I have mentored plenty of women from clubs before anyone, any woman in the sanctuary has come and say, hey, can you help me? Can you do this? Can you do? So for me, as long as I know who I am when I walk into that club and I remain that person, and I don't conform to what's happening there, then I'm okay. But the moment that club overtakes who I am, now we got an issue and I gotta go. But as long as I can go in there and sing my music, get my check and go home, then I'm all right. Well, I'm gonna get my check. Get the check, y'all, get the check. <laughs> Pastors, Michelle. Well, I was able to do some touring with different uh, secular artists, and I became a light in a dark place. And so I was able to live a life where they could say, hey, pray for me. You know, so you have to know who you are when you go into any type of place. You can be in the grocery store, and people know that the light is on you. You don't have to say a word. And so I was singing background for uh, um, Angie Stone, and we were praying. I became the chaplain of the tour. I didn't say anything, but I lived it. And when they went out and did their thing, I was in my room. That's just because I chose to be that, you know, that instance, that example. So you, we get it twisted. Um, they were tripping about Sunday's best and they turned the love song, uh, secular songs into, you know, songs to, to God. He is God. He is love. He's whatever you want him to be. And so we get boxed up so many times. Well, he shouldn't be doing, no, 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 no. If I have a child, he's 21, he's in college and the tour say, let's go. Michelle needs to go because I know what it will take for my house to maintain and be uh, what it needs to be to survive. Some things you can't take and some things you can. So you got to know what God called you to do. Pastors, how do you handle singers in your church that have jobs, secular music jobs? Um, Jennifer worked for me and I had to uh, make sure that she maintained her integrity as, um, as a worship leader to know that she was not engaging. Uh, and even myself, was invited to the club to sing as a pastor. And not to sing a love song. This but devil sing, is a lie. To sing an inspirational song. The preacher? The preacher went and sang. I didn't drink. I didn't even dance. And I like to do a couple slides here and there. But, uh, <laughs> but I know everybody can't handle that. Everybody can't handle that. So I know if that's going to be a stumbling block for you, I won't engage in that. But I actually went there. And as uh, Jennifer and Michelle has already said, 
it opens up doors for you to minister. And so many people were like, man, you took off your suit and tie, came here and sang, my soul's been anchored in the Lord, and we up here doing everything else. I said, yeah, because I'm telling my testimony that that's where my soul is. And so they began to open up. I began to minister. It wasn't anything that I made a habit out of. Uh, I felt uncomfortable, but because I was invited to do that for that purpose, that's what I did, and it became a ministering opportunity for people who would never step foot in the church. We think everybody's going to come to the church that's going to get saved, but we're just messing around, and we're fishing in the aquarium already. We need to get outside and go to some places, but you got to make sure that you you strong enough to handle it. Now, now you ain't... You know you ain't been delivered from drinking. You can't handle going to the club talking about you trying to minister. Uh, but drinking has never been an issue for me. That's never been an issue. I've always liked to dance. I'm a dancer. I like to do it. The percolator, that was my stuff. Amen. Uh, yeah, I percolated. West side, percolator, all that. Yeah. Epis- Episcopal vicar? I'm sorry. That was before the elevation. Oh. <laughs> But again, maintaining that integrity and knowing that it can be another form of of outreach. We can't be so uh, heavenly bound with no earthly good. Pastor Daniel Smith, music business. Should musicians or singers that work at a church be forced to sign a contract? Business is business. In the Bible, it speaks of is in, in business, be as men. And I think it's very important that you have contractual agreements with musicians and those who are going to be a part of the music ministry so that we won't have the um, backlash or the um, running away if someone offends you. This is a, a contractual agreement between you and the church um, for the movement, for the momentum of the church, for the advancement of the music ministry. And when you are contracted, you are governed to do that which is um, stated within that contract. It is a business. Church is business. Whether you want to believe it or not, it is business. Church is business. And if we govern ourselves in that manner, a lot of things that we deal with in church business or in church etiquette, we won't have too many problems if people understood um, that church is a business. It's ran like a business. It's govern ourselves as business women and business men. And I believe we will be more effective in that area when we move in that direction. Singers and the musicians. Singers and musicians. Singers and musicians. Hired singers and musicians. That's the difference. Now, when you're just a member of the church, I don't need a contractual agreement. I need commitment. Now, if I'm hiring you as a worship leader, then you own a contractual agreement with me. But if you're a member of my church, a member of my music ministry, I need your commitment. I need your dedication. I need your integrity. That's a different type of agreement than it is with a contractual agreement. Because that which you do, you do, that you do it as unto the Lord. So make sure we understand the difference between the two. Hire help and being a member is two different things. And as a member, you ain't helping. You're serving. Um, the moment that somebody tells me that they helping me, I don't need your help. My help comes from the Lord. <laughs> See, because when people think that they're helping you, it's like they're doing you a favor. You're not doing me no favor. You're serving the Lord. Because guess what? I'll sing all this by myself and still preach and still go up eight octaves because that's what the Lord has blessed me to be able to do without you. So don't come here. Um, That's another thing. We're talking about contracts. We do need to be contracted because everybody needs to understand what you are expected of. And what happens is a lot of times churches will hire musicians and say, we're going to pay you this weekly. But then that pastor goes out 52 times a year. And that, that musician is like, wait a minute, I didn't know we were going to be doing that. You know, we, we away from that day and time, we used to get the musicians the little money in the little yellow envelope, the love offering envelope. It's a total different thing now. We are keeping, we're taking taxes out of checks now. We're doing things on a different level. But if we don't have a contract, how can we hold them accountable to what the ministry is requiring of them? So once we have a contract and they agree to the terms that are within the contract, you are now able to hold them accountable for the things that are written therein. And now I can dock you when you're 15 minutes late. 
or I can give you something extra if I added an extra service. It works both ways. So we got to be able to understand that business has to be taken care of on both ends and it protects the musicians and it protects the church so that there's no issues when you know what's expected. If you expect the musicians to play at every funeral, then you got to let them know that. But every time somebody dies and you got people dying every month and they got lives to live and they got other jobs that they're trying to do and you're imposing and monopolizing that time, they need to be compensated. Baddest one hit my hand. All right, so can I jump in? I'm gonna jump, jump in. in. Yeah. All right, so I agree with the con well, I don't agree with the contract. That's just me. If you sign a W nine and you hire, that's that's enough right there. Like you, your job is what you asked me to do. Cool, I got that. If I'm late in the docking and all of that, it's a little. I get it, but it's a little. It's a little weird. It gets weird on both ends. Not come on, jump in. Jump, jump in. Jump now, in. does that happen? On the secular end? Nope. Ain't no doctor. Ain't none of that. So you all are... W9, that's it. If, if I'm up performing mm -hmm. and I see you strolling in, I'm already in my second win. You don't get paid. So don't get paid you don't or get don't paid. get docked. You don't get paid. You now I'll take that. Gig. <laughs> you missed the gig. If you're not on time for the gig... But I can't go on stage. Now, I'm about to talk as an artist. Now I can't go on stage without you. Exactly. Period. Right. So if if I still do the gig and I miss the gig, that's up to you to pay me. But you can fire me right on the spot. You're fired. I don't need you. It's simple. Y'all make it hard. It's real simple. <laughs> I, I don't think we make it. Here it goes. We, we don't make it hard. We're just looking for the consistency and the respect level. If I'm hiring you to be here at 12 noon out of respect for your gift, and the artist, you should be here on time. 12 noon to what? That, huh? 12 noon to okay, what? Past. Until I'm done with my set. 12 until <laughs> you're you done. So I was going to say, it, t two worlds, secular and two church. Two different worlds. And it, because the world, unfortunately, takes care of singers and musicians, you have to, on the church end, say, uh, this is what is going to happen because... We're looking for um, what y'all receive, but right. we can't. I get that, but I feel like that's an issue because what? when you when you separate, let, let, hit me out, hit me out. I get where you're going. And I agree to a certain extent because if I go over here and I can work and get my money without a problem, I'm happy. Why can't I come to church? You know, just if you tell me what it is and I show up and do what I do. It shouldn't be a problem. It's real simple. If you just stick to what you say and you do, it's real simple. Like, either you can make it or you can't. If you can't make it, I'll find somebody else. That's going to be on time. Yes, That's sir. going to do what I require. Which is true. Right? Which, that, that part is, we understand that part. But, like, if I went to work at a job, I did sign an application, and then I went to an orientation. The orientation told me everything that was getting ready, you know, my duties, blah, 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 blah. So it's not a bad thing to cover yourself because there are more entities than secular and church. Like he said, you show up for the gig, you play that show, you done. You might have a rehearsal, but with the church, he said, you got to, uh, the funerals, you got to come to the choir. It's, it's more entities, so we want to make sure that we're covered, right. you know, in, right. that, in right. that. So if it's, if it's more like funerals, this, that, that, whatever, I don't know what your agreement may be, but I feel like you, you should be compensated for everything. Right. Of we, course. Right. Let's, so let's talk from this funeral piece, and I know, I know y'all's got some more stuff to say, but let me, just, let me just jump on that real quick. As a pastor members thank you and those that are watching by way of social media if you have any questions you all can send your questions in and they're going to bring them to us so that we can read them i've got one from alicia and uh another one from someone else back to the funerals membership pays they they pay tithes weekly or bi-weekly or monthly when one of the members die and the tithes and offerings pay you what you get. Do you still charge for funerals after a tithe paying member who have paid you? Yes. The reason why is I know for a fact, because I work at a funeral home. When you, when you pass away, God forbid, but if you pass away, 
and you have a funeral at the funeral home or at the church, it's in the budget. So where does that money go? It, it's it's something that can be added. That is something. No, no, that, no, 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 no. no, no. I'm a a R Leak. I work there. I work at Cal. A R Leak is in the budget. It's not in the budget. It's if they, in the budget. They ask you if they ask the family that is preparing for the funeral. They ask, "Do you want us to pre- provide a musician?" Okay. And so. if 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 the funeral while you're doing that contract, that's something that is added on. And in, in that case, that money goes to the musician. But in the case that the family don't know anything about a musician, they don't have a relationship with a musician, that's not added in the contract, and that money is not going anywhere. There's no money. Okay, so we go back to your first question then about obligations. Like Pastor Smith said, it's a difference between an agreement and a contract. It's a difference between secular and gospel mm-hmm. side. So on the gospel side of the church scene, for me, I'm not signing a contract unless I get benefits. <laughs> okay, that's just me. I'm not speaking for nobody else. Uh, second thing, if I get a 1099 at the end of the year and I pay taxes, that's a job. Mm-hmm. I don't care how you look at it spiritually. If I got to pay taxes, that is a job. All right. The agreement all day long, I agree with you by being on time and stuff like that. And musicians does lack on that stuff like that. But it should be in the budget. How, how can you pay a musician, let's throw a number out there, $500 a week and expect them to play a service, a rehearsal, anytime somebody passed away, a church engagement, every time you go out, that, that's nothing. You could go and play five funerals a week and make the same thing in an hour. So, like, the church needs to step up. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, you talking to the church people. That's good. <laughs> All right, Bishop wants the audience to open up and have a few questions too, but while they're on the way, whoever has a question, there's a microphone here, and there's a microphone on the other side. Churches sometimes hold church longer than contractual agreements should the churches pay overtime. Y'all want me to answer that? <laughs> Y'all want me to answer that? Y'all want me to answer that? Okay, now it depends. It depends because if there's a move of God, we respect that. But sometimes there are there I have been in services where the pastor just kept going, there was not a move of God. He just didn't have nothing to do that day. Let us go. Let us go. So in that case, the musicians should be compensated. But if there's a move of God, so the thing of it is, is singers and musicians get bad reps because you want us to perform and be business minded, but you don't want to treat us business minded. So you want us to be on time. You want us to show up. You want us to conduct a rehearsal. You want us to sing. And then you want to pull me in the trustee office and say the offering was low. Well, that ain't my fault because I was here. I sang. I taught. I sweated, I lost an eyelash, a lot of stuff happened. Where's my check? So you expect us to be on time, you expect us to be here, you want us to sing at Aunt Eula May funeral, whatever, we understand. A tie pan member, there are some members where we, we're not gonna, cause we're not bad people. So we're not gonna ask you to pay us for everything. But when you begin to abuse what we do, Now I need to be compensated because when you go out and you preach, they gave you a check. So when they gave you a check, Pastor, where was my cut? Because I had to go too. So it's a business. Where's my cut? And then you got to discuss all this stuff in the beginning before you go to church. If if, If I go to a church and you tell me the service started at 12, I'm gonna ask you, what time is your service over? You know, I travel, so if I got to make a flight, I mean, I've done it, I hate to say it, but I've left in the middle of the service. You know, ag- agreement, not contract, agreement. <laughs> you know, because you, for me, like I said, if you ain't giving me benefits, I'm not signing a contract. Let's, uh-oh. Get in the aisle, saints. Don't be so quiet. Say something. We need y'all. Get in these aisles. Ask some questions. Talk. Give us your opinions. Give us your suggestions. We want to hear from you. The reason why we did this is because I realized what the musicians taught me. 
there is a different mindset. Musicians have a total different mindset than the pastor. The singers have a total different mindset than the pastor. Everybody is thinking according to their mindset. So I used to dock the musicians. <laughs> we start at 8 o'clock, you got to be there at 7.15 for sound check. If you're not there at 7.15, we dock you. You're getting paid. The rest of these singers are volunteers. They're not getting nothing. And you sitting up there getting paid and you can't be on time, we dock you. Now, does that work on the back hold end? On, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold <laughs> on. Does overtime then come in? Then my music leader talked to me and said, now, wait, Bishop. You docking all this stuff. When you dock musicians, you change their mindset, and then now they're going to get you back. They're going to start treating you a certain way. And then when you go over, now sometime at the powerhouse, we have what we call the remnant service. The last Sunday, church was over at 10 o'clock. We started at 7 o'clock. We dismissed at 10. A lady came 30. to me, told me she was, needed a miracle. Church was over. I told Josiah, get back on the organ. It said 1015. Get back on the I don't think I paid you for that one, but I paid you for some more other ones. But uh, I forgot. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. It just came to me in the temple. I didn't, I didn't give you nothing for that last rim. I ain't forget. But, <laughs> <laughs> Remember me. But um, when, when we get extremely long in revival, you know, I do try to give them a little something extra because the music helps the preacher. It helps the singer. It's very, very, very important. So I, what I wanted to do today is give us the, un what is the musician's mindset? What is the singer's mindset? What is the pastor's mindset? Let's put those three mindsets out and, and try to get some unity, some understanding. You know, one of the mindsets that bothers me is when musicians spend the church money from their seats. You sitting up there, okay, we had First Fruit Sunday, you know, and y'all see all the money came in, so now everybody want to raise after First Fruit Sunday because they feel the church got all that money. I'm going to tell you something. You looking at these offerings and stuff, you don't know how much this stuff costs. It, every time the building opens, the lights come on. It ain't their problem. It's not their problem. You shouldn't have to pay for that, but it costs money to have church. And anytime you make over $600 in a year, you have to pay taxes. So therefore, you have to have a contract. And it is a business. That's not volunteer, and the church do need to come up. But help me, like raises. When do you get raised? Well, the pastor got a new car. Oh, you got a new car, and I've been sacrificing and going through for you all this time. You out there with that new car, but I can't get no raise, and I'm going through my family, and I'm dealing. You've been elevated to bishop. When you're going to elevate me, you getting money. This bishop stuff ain't got no money, at least not for me. I better take this mic. Hey, bishop, wait, 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 bishop, 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 wait. Let, let's ask you a question. Come on. What should a musician get paid? It depends on what they do. I don't, I don't mind paying musicians. Music is very important to me. It's too important. Sometimes the Lord rebukes me because I, I put too much on it. I love music, but I'm a, I'm a worshiper. I love to worship. But the music shifts a house. The sound shifts the house. So, and then, then it's so, how much of the music, it the depends. Pay. And then, then the they told me the different the time. If it's an 8 o'clock service, the rate may be lower because a lot of people ain't having church at 8. But if you want me for 10, that's main time, that's stream I, time. I, I agree with you, Bishop. How much? I believe it's based on, on the their musicality. I got your musicality. Let's make that word up. Come on. Is that a word? It's, it's, that's a word. It's a word. That's creative. It's a word. It is? It's a word. Musicality. I don't know, and I like it. <laughs> musicality. It's a word. Principalities and musicality. <laughs> Come on. Jesus. Okay. So it depends on their skill. Because if they're still transposing while I'm preaching or my choir oh. singing, that's another level of rate. But <laughs> why? Why hire, Why hire him? him? But see, the, 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 no, I, I'm just speaking in general. I, I would never hire a transposer. <laughs> oh, Push that's, the button. What, 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 tell them what, yeah, you all are musically on that end. Tell them what I, I know when they're trying to find it. Transposing is when you got a keyboard player or organist and it's, it's digital, you know, it's keyboard, mm -hmm. so you, you can't play in a certain key, so you can go in the system and move the dial up mm -hmm. either two or three and they can play in the key they're comfortable in, uh, but it's another key. Right. You can like you can key. tell 
because the, the register sounds so muddy or so high, cheesy, and be you just be like, you good? <laughs> no, you're not. Let me ask one more question. This this when my all my trouble started. Y'all help me. We're in the season of the prophetic, so. I don't even count myself as no singer, even though I sing all the time. My wife tell me I sing too much, too long. I just like it. I love the Lord. Okay. You don't love him? What's wrong with you? <laughs> but, um, so this, this, one, this one I really understood. So in prophetic worship on Sundays, and I need y'all to help explain this to the world, now we're creating songs during Sunday morning service. I think it's called a work behind you. Maybe y'all can explain that. So this is when my trouble started. I started creating praise and worship songs. Then when we got ready to record a CD, and everybody was like, well, who's the songwriter? Is it Bishop? Well, Bishop, I started playing the music, and when I was playing the music, you just made up a song to the music I was playing. Or did you just start singing and I accompany you? So who's the accompanier? Who's the composer? Who's the songwriter? Who going to get your check when the CD come out? Help me with that. You go first Jesus. You split it. Yeah. It's a split. It's a split. Yeah. For sure. I mean, you don't know about that. Yeah, it's a, oh, it's a split, but I mean, of course, you t when, once you get into percentages, you know, that's when it can get it, it can get tricky, just being real, um, because you don't know who did how much work, or if everybody want to just be fair and be like, let's just split it evenly, even. yeah. and then, you know, to me, that's the best way to just split it even, unless you know you did majority, majority. of the work. So. Okay, it really depends on how the situation starts. Absolutely. One, if Bishop gets up and starts All singing words. first with his own melody, you owe me nothing. Right. Now, that's work for hire. I could put music, anybody could put music to a melody. Right. All right. But if I'm playing first and you're writing to my music, we're splitting that 50 50. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's, it's in, in writings and publishing, that's a whole nother conversation, too. That's but a whole writing, other panel. That's a whole nother panel. Yeah, that's a whole nother thing where you dealing with music and, you know, composers and all that stuff like that. I mean, we could take all day to talk about that, but. At the end of the day, if you have your melody already and you're singing and you started off, it's work for hire. And it's, it's my decision if I want to play. Absolutely. Being honest with you, if you're in the church and you're flowing and then you decide to take my music that you did and take it to a whole other producer, then I can sue you. Because 9 out of 10, like I can go back to your live stream. I can mail in that to Library of Congress and say that's my music, and then you already know what happened when after that. But knowledge is power. That's a whole di that's a whole different whole different issue. There was a there was a situation, and then we go to the questions. Uh, there was a situation when George Jordan wrote "Jesus Can Work It Out." Doctor Hayes put "How You Gonna Pay Your Rent?" All your money spent. Jesus and Work It Out was already recorded twice before Father Hayes got it. Diane sang that song from 80 on up to 2019. The royalties went to Christian Tabernacle Publishing. They did not go to Father Hayes and they didn't go to Diane. But Pastor Woods thought because she put the hook on the end give her a blessing because of what she made the song to become. But the song was already Jesus can work it out. So it'd be better not to put no hook on the end of nobody's song thinking you're going to be paid for it. Because whoever owns the song, you can make it, you can make millions of dollars for somebody else from your hook. That's a whole different situation. I wrote the song, you made it famous for me. All right, there you go, there and, you go. And in and, and the secular world, is totally different too. You know, we could get together right now and me and Rico could do a track and we say we produce it and we wrote the song, you know, but you wrote the lyrics. I mean, that's, that's a whole nother situation. I think the secular world wins more than the gospel side. All you, the time. I could, um, 
DeAndre Pastor DeAndre Pastor can do a record right now. He got a record deal, and he asks us to write a song. Why you take a percentage of my publishing? But like I said, that's a whole nother. That's a different that's a difference in the class. Absolutely. Question. Yeah. Hey Amen. Um, we talk about music. We talk about once we know who was in charge of music, we can understand where music came from. Lucifer was in charge of music. When you go to the Bible, Lucifer was the only one that can go into the holies of holies and see God, the Father, and the Son standing in there. Michael couldn't go. Gabriel couldn't go. But Lucifer went. He was in charge of music. He controlled the music. He controlled the choir. But he did something wrong. He saw the glory of God and he wanted it. And God told him that Michael, the archer, kick him out. Out of heaven. And he took three quarters of heaven with him. But he was in charge of music, y'all. Now there's no music in heaven but worship and praise. Music has been kicked down here. And what Lucifer did, because he's smart, because he knows the scriptures. Lucifer said, if I can get into the house of God. If I can change the concept of music, I can still make them do what I want them to do. And to prove that point, you go into a grocery store, any of us, let a Keith Sweat get on there, a Jay-Z. You'll see the Christian start, oh, loose here. Because that was music. So to understand music, you must understand where was the root music came from. Music came from Lucifer because Moses was in the mountain with Joshua. And Moses heard a different sound. He said, Joshua, I hear a different sound down there. It's not the sound of gospel. It's not the sound of Christ. Study the scriptures. Moses came down and he saw the Ten Commandments. He saw them worshiping something differently, playing different music. And what did Moses tell him? Choose this day who you're going to serve and who you're going to worship and praise. Moses and Aaron and, the, and all of them stood on one side and the other one stood on the other side. And the Bible said the earth opened up and swallowed the rest of them. Because they did not have the sound. I'm not knocking none of y'all to making money with music. But I need to know where's your allegiance to God. Because God said I give it and I take it away. You can't, back in the day, you couldn't compromise God. Either you're going to be with me, or you're going to be out me. Thank you, sir. Choose this. Amen. Thank you. So what was Thank you. So, so what, what was the what question? What was the question? <laughs> this was the question. The question was, before he cut me off, the question was this. The ca who are you serving? And the question is, the Catholic don't have a problem playing the musician. The Pentecostal, the apostolic don't have a problem playing their musicians. You don't hear a Catholic priest playing music somewhere else. You do not hear Pentecostal, apostolic preacher, organist playing somewhere else. They have allegiance to the ministry. I'm not knocking what y'all do because God used whom he chooses. Okay. Music brings people in. But my thing is why is that the churches have a problem with the musicians? That's good. Okay. So let me ask him a question. Do you work a job? Oh, yes, I do. And you get a check? Yes, but this... Is it a job at a church? No, no let me check. Then you, why would you take you it if it was not it. a job? I can answer it. You want me to answer it? Absolutely. This is the answer. The Bible says first natural, then spiritually. My natural job is I'm, I'm a heat plant that's making almost 150000 a year. But my job in the ministry is elder. I don't mix my job with my ministry. Amen. Because God said, you, 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 this is your job. All the 12 disciples had a job. Come back to the mic. All the 12 disciples had a job. Peter, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John all had a job in businesses. It did not interfere with what they did for Christ. But this, Paul, this, this, this is the thing. This is the music. And you, you are a preacher. He's preaching. And the rest of them on this mic don't be up here preaching. He was excellent. It was a great message. But this is what I want to say. The whole, no, that man preached in a minute. He did and gave a solid word. But this, I think this is the issue. What we're saying is their full-time job is music. It's something wrong with that. No. Can we blame them for that? That's no. what they do. They spend their time, they spend their energy studying, perfecting their craft. This is what they decided to do. So what's, what's wrong with that? The priests and the Levites lived off of the temple, the, the offerings that came in the temple. The priests and the Levites, the minstrels, 
they lived off of what was brought into the temple. So we believe that people can work full time in ministry. No, 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 no. I'm not. The, the question was, should they? Should people be paid? No, no, no. Well, I'm saying people. The, the question was, should you be paid? Yes. They should be paid. Question. Who questioned the, the contract? He said he wouldn't take a contract without benefits. And he also questioned having a, a W-9. There are legal ramifications that we must adhere to. Because if not, you're going to face the consequence as well as the church and the pastor. And so the reason why we do that is to protect the integrity of both parties. Because if we allow you to work and you make $20,000, $30,000 a year on the church book, on the church budget, and IRS come and say, hey, how do you account for this $30,000? Somebody has to answer for that. And you're going to answer for it, and whoever administra administrated is going to have to answer for it. So we have to protect the integrity of the church and the person that we're paying. Now, what I do is when I interview uh, a musician, and he comes in, and I tell him, you know, if we're going to hire you, I agree with you. If I'm going to hire you, if I'm going to hire you as a W-2, then I have, to, I have to provide you a vacation week or whatever. I have to get, offer you something. But if you come in as a W-9, you are an independent contractor. At that point, you can decide whether you want to take the job or not. That's, a, that's solely up to you. That's solely up to you. And, and I don't have a problem with you saying, no, I don't want to take a 1099. But I, I, refuse, I refuse to pay somebody under the table cash money and then somebody come in and investigate me and I face going to jail based upon somebody else benefiting from the money that I'm giving them. And you should never. Right, nobody, nobody yeah, said that, sir. Um, I think you misinterpreted <laughs> what I said. Yeah. The statement I said was, I'm not gonna sign a contract yeah. unless I get benefits. And I also said that if I get a 1099, because I forgot what the discussion was earlier, it, I think we talked about jobs in particular. If I pay taxes, it's a job. Okay. I'm not in no disagreement with you on that. I believe that everybody needs to pay their taxes. As um, far as, I mean, that's just me. I can't speak for these guys, but yeah, we, we got to pay taxes. Now, now help me out. When you said, when you said it's 1099, it's a job. So, so what does a job entail? The job entail you, you being responsible, being on time. I, I heard all that. I, we never denied that. We, we never denied that. Well, the, the, whole, the, the whole topic was agreements and contracts. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying I'm not signing a contract. We could agree all day. Let's say, for instance, if, the, if we do this agreement for a year and you lose your member six in six months, are you going to still pay me my other six months? If we got a contract, right? I'm accountable for it. I'm responsible for it. And so it. what happens when you can't do it? So hopefully the church manager. No, 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 no. Reality. Let, let, Reality. It's no hopefully in contracts. No, let, okay, well, let, let, me talk from my, let me talk from my perspective. Number one, number one, if I hire you within a year and I lose my membership within a year, whatever the case, I, I'm, I'm a steward over. I'm a steward over what God entrusts me with. Trust me, I got enough set aside to cover you for that year. That's you. That's I'm you. saying but in I, general in churches. <laughs> if, if, if a church paid me, if a church, if I sign an agreement, a church paid me $100,000 a year, there, there is, and they decide in six months they can't do it. It's a contract. They're still responsible. They're still on the hook for it. As long as we're on the same page. They're still on the hook for it. As long as we're still on the same page. They're still, yeah. Preferably they won't file chapter seven, but they're on the hook for it. As long as we're on the same page. <laughs> Brother? Uh, thank you all for uh, being transparent, first of all. Um, uh, the brother touched on um, in the book of uh, uh, Leviticus when he gave the splits of who worked in the temple. The whole point of the Levites was he needed those dedicated to solely work in the temple. There was land divided amongst Israel. But by the time Nehemiah gets on the scene, of course it falls off before that, Nehemiah inquires where are the tithes? He inquires because he noticed the temple was, it, was, it wasn't together. People were not doing their duties. And when the question was asked, because the Levites were working in their fields, they were never supposed to work in their own fields. But there was no ties being divided. So when, so when people have an issue with musicians uh, being uh, full-time workers and working in secular 
because the church will tell you, well, we don't have that much. We can't, you can't give you that much. Where, my question is for the, the panel, how do you now, um, how do you work with, or how do you, that, is, that, is that a justification that you, you can't give me what I need to survive, then I need to be able to get it in other sources? Is that, is that, is that the justification? I'm trying to ask to uh, understand the justification for other, other areas. I, I'm, I'm a firm believer, especially for, for musicians, I love musicians, like Bishop Hudson, I, I, I love good musicians. And if I know that I'm not able to compensate them in an area or what they need to have done, I do not mind them going somewhere else at a 12 o'clock service or a three o'clock service, whatever they need, they need to do to make sure that their home is taken care of or, or what they need to have done is completed. I have no problem with that. But we as pastors and, and visionaries, including myself, I am a stickler for excellence. So I pay for what I want to have done. Good. Even if it comes out of my own account. That's right. Because I know the musicality and the <laughs> anointing, the gift that, that they have, I'm going to give them what I feel that they deserve in well, that area. I have a part B for you, particularly. Uh, if you want to hire a musician, um, I guess a general question. Uh, musicians are told to play the record all the time. Play the record. That's not what's on the record. And then sometime I get to rehearsal and singers or whatever would change the key. I'm saying, if, why you want me to play the record if you're going to change the key? You're playing the record to get familiar with the music. But once you come into my rehearsal, you have to govern to what I want to have done. Okay. But you're getting the basics from the original so you transpose a song, but I can't... I don't transpose. No, no, I'm just saying the you is general, not you. Oh. So a person... <laughs> you said you don't transpose If you don't transpose songs, I applaud you. Oh, right. You one in a million. Did I answer your question? That was it. No, yeah, that was just one question. Come on, y'all. We, we got to come through. This ain't no good night. Hey, glory. I don't feel nothing. Thank you, Jesus. That's better. Let me tell you something. I'm sorry, I'm just taking over. Please forgive me. Social media, and, and our questions gotta be quick. Can't be as long as man. Social media <laughs> has changed everything, everything yes. for the church. I'm finna say something right now, y'all. Have a little mercy on me. For those who are watching online, I'm about Jesus all the way. That, that's it, that's all. But we gotta discuss platforms, branding, marketing, all this stuff on social media. Because depending upon your church, if your church is big and popular and has great marketing, whoever you put on that pulpit, platform, whatever you want to call it, to sing, they are using your brand to make themselves. And here's a problem in the church, and I don't mean to preach like the Reverend over there, but people are coming to churches singing, and, and when they sing, you're going to get engagements. You're going to get doors. Sometimes people come to a church with a big brand, and they are nobody. But if you play on, if you go and play for Bishop T.D. Jakes, you're going to be somebody. Who are you? I am nobody who played for Bishop T.D. Jakes. You think everybody gonna want to hire because you were on that platform. If Oprah Winfrey say something good about, she said something about red bottom shoes, and everybody got red on their shoes, paying eight hundred dollars because Oprah said that. Okay, she made the platform. So how do we deal with this when people don't have platforms and they use our churches to make a platform, and then they start leading people out of the church? to go follow their platform and build their thing. So now you the praise and worship leader, but you taking the praise team to go sing at your engagements. You know how I gotta preach. So do we go with the worship leader who got an engagement, who might be paying, or do we go sing with Bishop who got an engagement? It's all type of stuff that is really going on in the church and these singers, worship leaders, that's a whole nother thing. We gotta talk about it. Cause people now just don't come to church for the pastor, they come for the worship leader. So when the worship leaders leave, they feel the church go down because I ain't leading worship. But it's a mess. But you hired them, so did you? You knew what they were going to draw. 
then you knew, that you knew whoever you were hiring per musician, singer, uh, notable pastors just got hired in Atlanta because they knew what he would do. My Lord. So it's a twofold thing. You know, I, I, yes. That's why pastors are hiring these famous musicians because yeah. it's, it's a combustion yeah. of brands. What do I call it? It is, a, it is a, a mixture of brands. So when Keisha McFarlane, who is my daughter, where's she at? Keisha, you done left out the church? Come on, mother. Glory to God. Come on up here. <laughs> Would you, see? Before she came to our church, she was wearing all of this stuff. We was wearing black and white, and she came in there with all this stuff. And the, the sleeves out, and that's why we look like we look now. It's her fault. But um, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. No, she's creative. She said, Bishop, you got to let us, we can't wear robes. I want the band to wear robes, you know? She said, Bishop, we can't wear robes. We got to, we got to change a little bit. You got to help us. It's 2019. Okay, so here's the thing. Before she came, before I hired her at our church, she was already somebody. She had a brand, okay? Then I'm Bishop Hudson. So when we came together, our brands collided, which was good. That's good for the church. It's good for the ministry. But I taught my people, don't get locked up in no I don't know how long she's going to be. I'm the pastor. You better lock into me. You better lock into your church. Now, she still, she don't work at our church, but she's still a daughter. She's still a member. She's still a tither. And I commend her because this is an awesome thing. She does not work at our church. She didn't get fired. She just said, Bishop, God's leading me another way. I didn't have a problem with it. She was honest with me. She come to church. She still pay her tithes. She still give. And she said, and I'm proud of you because that don't happen in a lot of churches. When people stop working at the church, they lead the church, take folk with them. And, and all they got to do is post one thing about you on social media. And it don't have to be true, but everybody will believe it. All right, I'm talking too much. Come on, I didn't take your pen. Come on, what you gonna say since you're up here with this suit on? Um, what, one of the things I wanted to say, uh, somebody's, I, I well, and this is just, this is, um, I, I think that musicians will, they are more important when it comes to compensation. It's quiet. Um, cause singers, we don't, if we get paid, um, and I'm not, and I'm speaking as a worship leader, as an artist in every capacity. And so I, I feel like a lot of times, and I love musicians, y'all know that Josiah, you know, y'all great, but, um, they tend to, um, run, I, 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 right, say how I feel they can, their decisions and their responses have, have the tendency to try to control things by them showing up or not showing up or what I'm going to do, what I'm not going to, but singers don't get that. They, right, they don't get that. Right, right, right. So um, I think that's something that needs to be, huh? <laughs> I think y'all do right. the same thing. I'm sorry. Huh? I think singers do the same thing. But we, but we don't get singing. compensated. Here's the thing. But you do the same thing, right? Wait, what do you mean? You walk in when you feel like it sometimes. Like the musician. If you say a musician walk in late, sing. I'm not walk talking in. about late. Okay, we well, ain't talking about late. Okay, but I'm saying we do the same stuff. Like, we may have the same problem. Who said no? I've seen them both that's, happen. That's your what? job. That's, that's right. That's your my job. job. But if you... That's... that's but see, my point but is my that, go, go ahead. ahead. Keep, so if, let me but, let me finish. Let me get my point so you can make sure. My point is that I think that the um, it, it's it's I don't want to say manipulative, but that's the only word that fits. Sometimes uh, the 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 disposition of musicians are I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna do this. Whereas singers are we don't we don't we we do. I, we do, but we don't get compensated. You all always get paid. Y'all don't come out the house most of the time unless you're getting paid. Am I right? Uh, you know what I'm saying? But we come out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, Michelle, Jennifer, y'all know what I'm talking about. So that's something that I, I feel like we need to address. Well, you I know what, too? To this is the thing. I remember when I was young, I was in the 
WWP and all the little choirs and the angel choir. Those were years that I sown, I've sown into the church. I, I was there. I was faithful. I was a member of Kevin Davidson and the Voices for 20 years. I didn't get a check. I did not get a check. I did get platform. I did get a blessing to be on records and an opportunity to be up front where there were artists that saw me. So there was a time I had to sow. And so now there's a reaping. And I don't make any apologies for it. Now, I'm not able to be at my church all of the time. My tithes are paid up. My activity on Bible study is there when I'm not out of town. I am a faithful member. Visibly, I might not be there on Sundays, but I'm a faithful member. Because this is what I do to eat. This is how I make a living. So my 9 to 5 is on a plane. And I, I, my, I, my pastor understands that. But at the end of the day, I understand musicians, you guys do abuse it because you know you, we need you. You know we need you. Even singers. We all abuse the, the rights and privileges. I, worship leader, well, you know what? I ain't, they, ain't, they cut my, you know, I, my check, blah, blah, blah. Well, I ain't coming. And then you do have people that are there for you, and you manipulate those people to follow you and not show up too. So it's, a, it's, it's bad all across. It's bad across. But we have to remember that Christ is the only way. He is it. If, 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 and, and pastors have said all the time, I do it by myself if I got to have flesh rule before him. So let's, all that stuff, that's good. But if he's not lifted, the Bible says if I be lifted up, I'll draw. Not the singer, because you can show up with no voice. But God can still get the glory. Because of who he is. So I want the audience and then the, the social media to understand these are just real life issues that we deal with. But these young men didn't start off getting paid. They was a little drama that they was telling to get off. Okay. And they were watching. And so now they've come to an established place in life to get compensated. Just like this one. I know we started. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank sorry. you, Michelle. You come cut on. me off. Please, I'm, baby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm playing. I'm just playing. We, we can't be here too much longer because we got church and we got church too. So let's keep on going. Now, brother. understanding the business aspect, you know, that's all good. Everybody get paid. Um, and really, what I believe what the discussion is about is you're hired for your sound. Understanding that the sound is ever evolving. What do you do? And we're preaching as a church on deliverance or your musician is not fasting. And what if we do you know, if your musician don't have a prayer life and you want to get to a certain glory or sound, but your musician can't get there? Pastors? I had a musician that... Um, we, we were going through a tough time uh, and we weren't connecting spiritually. And he's a gifted musician. Um, perfect pitch, all of that. Uh, I could come in and say I heard something on the radio and start singing it and he could pick it up and play. And I told him, I said, we're going to go through a, another six month period um, and if we don't connect spiritually, I'm going to have to let you go. Because you assist me in what I do. Your sound almost dictates the, what's going to happen in my service. Before I get to, get to my people, your sound has already greeted them. And so I got to make sure that I'm not walking into a foreign atmosphere or something that's not a conducive in the area in which I'm trying to take the church. So I got to make sure that we're on the same page. No longer is your skill good enough to keep you here. Your anointing is going to have to keep you here. All right. Thank you. So uh, I actually had only one question when I came, but now I have a question to comment. So the first question is, uh, now that I've mo moved to Music City, uh, is it a cultural thing in our, uh, in our experience of uh, Pentecostal persuasion uh, that the musicians and singers get paid? Because I've talked to pastors of other races and ethnicities where they have great musicianships who are professional musicians, recording artists, 
and they actually serve at their church on Sundays, and there's no compensation whatsoever. Now, as far as their job, their job is recording, and they do everything at the church with no compensation, whether it's rehearsal, additional services, and I know they don't have the same persuasion. So that's my first question. Is it only cultural that we do that? Now, my uh, comment is for the, I don't know who said it, do you get paid on your job? But we have to be careful when we make comments like that because we have people who serve in the church every day, all day, and then they go to a nine to five. For example, I'm gonna use a Brian Fenderson, a police officer, Deacon Buchanan, a police officer, and they'll provide security all day, all night at the church, no compensation, but they're trained in police enforcement. So we have to make sure we don't make those comments because you can you know, discredit the people of God. We got people who can fry some good chicken and they fry chicken every Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Don't get paid, go nine to five, but you come in because you have a talent that is seen. So we have to be careful with those comments. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Well, let, let me say this first. Let, it let, was let me, me say, though, Curtis, it was me, I said I'll, it. Go, go ahead, let, no, I ain't worried about you. We, we on the same page. Yeah, it was me. The, so, here, here's the thing for me. You know, and I'm, I'm going two ways with it. One, when you go to high school, college, they don't teach you how to play gospel music. That's number one. I'm going somewhere with this. The point is, it's like we playing both sides of the fence. Now you're saying, okay, we should not be compensated at the church you know, I'm not saying he directly saying it, but in so many words, that's what it's coming to, that we should sow into the church for free. But then we have a problem if we go play secular. So, I mean, pick, pick a side. Like, you saying the, the musician in Nashville, they're recording musicians. I, I know they, they play a lot of country music, a lot of jazz, a lot of rock and pop, and they get union pay. They, they in a union. A, a scale pay. I mean, I know if, if, if I hire somebody to play strings on a song, they don't charge by the song. They charge by the hour. So they're reading music, you know, and they're getting paid $150 an hour and probably play one song. So I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to understand um, that I'm responding to your comment as far as sewing. Right, well, and, and then I want to say this. I was actually, was it a cultural thing? But I do understand there was a church that I grew up in mm -hmm. that had uh, professors who played the piano, who were at rehearsals, uh, drummers, myself included. I played the drums as a little boy. My brother played the drums. On albums, mm -hmm. rehearsals, mm -hmm. got nothing but a chicken dinner and a God bless you, and we appreciated it. I'm talking about some, the church I came to was a big size church. The drums at the church were the drums that my mother bought. Mm -hmm for us, mm -hmm. and we had to practice at the church. So I'm not saying that there shouldn't be no compensation, but where do we make the shift from like 1980 to like now 2019, where now everybody gets paid for coming into the door? When do we, I know we've sown, I'm not saying you shouldn't, but when do we say, you know what, not when you're at a visiting church, not when you're at higher church. If you come play for me, you're not a member, I'm hiring you. But when do we say, this, this is my pastor, I'm doing this as my service to the Lord and my pastor. Where do I sow my time and not just, but who gave me the talent? Who allowed me to do this? I'm a preacher. You ain't got to pay me nothing. I'm going to say God bless you and pray for you. You ain't got to pay for that. I could go to school all day long. So I'm not saying conversation is not needed. What I'm saying is two things. Is it a cultural? And if so, what do we need to do to change the culture? Should it be that way? And number two, we have to be uh, careful of our mindset of how we speak about our gifts and talents. Because this brother may be talented in frying chicken. That don't make him no less than you because you can play some keys. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. The key um, word you said, though, Pastor, is member. That, that's the key word. And I, I hate to use Pilgrim today, but 75% of musicians that play today is not, not a part of Pilgrim. Absolutely. All right, why? Where are the Pilgrim musicians at? Why are they not playing? It has nothing to do with money. It, 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 Come they, on, Curtis. They, um, they, they, they scared of Bishop. Y'all not scared of Bishop. Let me, let me just bust this We're in. We're not scared of Bishop. Let me answer his cultural question, okay? Me too. Um, just real quick, it is absolutely not cultural. As a matter of fact, just to let you know, uh, 65 of my 65 percent of my income comes from the white church. I go once a month, $1,200 a month, once a month. 
I make sure that the musicians have what they need. If I step in and say, get rid of that motif, get a Nord, it's there the next day. Get a six piece DW, it's there the next day. I have no problems at all. As a matter of fact, when I got ready to leave the church, our bishop said, you better not leave that, they pay you too good. And I didn't go, you know, I said, you need to reduce my hours. And they paid me the same amount, reduce hours. Completely white church, you know what I'm saying? Complete. And, and you know, and I know cultural. we're watching, it's, very it's, it's, it, it's, you get paid based off what you do. You feel what I'm saying? Now, when I do step in and play, the service is about 75 minutes long, if that, the music piece Stay there is 25 minutes long. You read charts, you have a pre-rehearsal, you read the charts, you play the charts, you can leave. They're gonna preach and dismiss the service to some backing tracks. And you don't get reduced pay. Amen. So I believe that it is a cultural thing. Um, because, and I'm gonna play a couple of fields here. When I have served in a Caucasian church, whatever the case may be, I was treated differently. Um, I was paid differently. And there are people, I know I have plenty of friends who serve at a multicultural church and don't get paid. But these are also friends who are in service for 90 minutes. They didn't have an extra rehearsal. They didn't have an extra engagement. They didn't have a BTU. They didn't have a this, they didn't have a that. And they were treated well. The pro a lot of times in the black churches is, y'all pay us, but y'all don't treat us good. You give us a check, but you don't speak to us. You give me a check, maybe, but you don't ask me if I'm okay. And then I go to this church, and Susan then brought me coffee. She brought me a donut. She gave me a halls. She gave me this. She gave me a towel. She prayed with me. She wanted to know if my shoe needed to be tied. She took good care of me. So now, anytime Susan calls me, I'll go. Even if Susan don't have the money because of how she treated me. But a lot of times, I have turned down plenty of engagements and they had the money because they were nasty. I don't want your money. You keep your money. God will provide for me. It's a cultural thing. They treat people well. They do us right. When they say we're in at 9.30 and we're out at 10.30, I'm in my car at 10.32. I'm not waiting for the next song at 10.45. And I got my check at 9.31. They treat us well. So I believe it's based off how we're treated. It is a cultural thing. They appreciate the gifts and talents that people have. The problem in the black churches is everybody feel like they more talented, so I don't need you. So I'm not gonna appreciate the fact that you came and you did this and you did that because I can get somebody better to do it. But in another church, they appreciate the fact that you have taken time to take out student loans, go to school, learn your craft, do this, do that, and you study at home to be able to provide what's needed on a Sunday morning. A lot of people don't appreciate that. These musicians have gone to school. They are reading charts, they're reading music. I'm a part of a union house. So when I go into a studio session and they say, this is what needs to happen, I'm not paid, well, it's three songs. Okay, well, if them three songs take six hours, my fee per my union is $150 an hour, whether you ever get a song done or not. But I went to school, I took out loans, I did what I had to do to study my craft to be able to provide what's needed in the church today. And the black church doesn't honor that. They want the person that learned up under the table because they want to pay us a certain kind of way and it's not fair. Just like you got a family, we got a family. Just like you're a hairdresser, I'm a singer. You want to be paid for that extra braid. I want to be paid for my extra run. What's the problem? <laughs> I, think, I, think, I, think some, I think some of this you, you all hit some amazing points, all the questions, and we want to try to get these last few, just these last few, no more. Bishop said no. We, we, we got to go. We got to raise the offering because we do have to pay the musicians. Not for today. Y'all ain't getting paid today. We, we didn't pay any today. We got to pay you for tonight. So we got to raise the offering so we can pay them. Okay. Um, can y'all give me 30 seconds? Is it a question or a statement? It Just give it to me real question. quick. Give it to us. Because um, some people did already touch give it to on us, my, give it to us. my question is, you get paid at the church. I'm talking to the musicians and the singers. What do you give to the church in your craft? Tithes? I, I tithe to my church. 
I'm not, not I, all of us tied and offer. I'm, I'm talking about outside of that as far as service. If, if I'm a member of my church, I'm dedicated to my church. If I just work at the church, once again, I'm doing what I'm obligated to do and I'm out the door. But honestly, most members that work at a church, they only come to do their work. You, I ain't never seen no musician that he ain't playing and he come in the Bible class. Now, Curtis will come. That don't happen. They come in to play. Come on. Real quick, 30 seconds. I'm a musician as well. Uh, two past. musicians, love y'all. Uh, why is it that we have musicians that will try and charge a 100-member church the same thing they want to charge a four or 500-member church? And also, at times, they'll go and sit, and y'all know what I'm talking about, they'll sit second fiddle waiting to get in line to play for free. So why do we have musicians that do that? It's a job. It doesn't matter how many members you have. If you play the organ, you got to pay. Won't care if it's two people, ten people, five people. They playing. They using their skill. If you're using your skill to play, you got to pay. They don't care. You ain't got no members. What they got to do with it? And if you and if you want them, if you want them, you'll pay their rate. You know, if if that's what you want, and they ask you for a certain price, that's that's what you would pay. And you have different musicians that play on certain rate levels. Certain rate level. That, it don't matter. If you yeah. want them, and they say, hey, I need this, this is what I need to make it through the week, come every week, be committed, you pay that rate. What about the second fiddle piece? Now, the second fiddle piece, you got musicians that just, that just chase opportunity and chase, like, hype. You know, that's, that's the day we live in. I ain't go, platform, you said platform, you got, you got musicians chasing hype 24-7. So I can't deny that at all. Like, yeah. Thank God for my best. I mean, if the, yeah. air, if the air is out at the church, they don't care you got 50 members. If they oh, think yeah, build their resume. Yeah, that's good. You got to They're trying to build their resume. Yeah. Okay, a different question. Uh, Real quick. Secular and spiritual. Are we prostituting our gifts, those that are going into the secular world and giving your gift to that entity, and those that are in the spiritual? So if the church is not paying you what you want, and you go to the secular side to get what you want, are your gifts being prostituted? Can I answer that? Well, yes. Let me, let me ask you this: Are you married? Yes. What songs did you do at your wedding? There you go. I don't remember. Uh, exactly. So, do you want a church musician to play your wedding, or do you want a, a specific band and singers that do wedding music? Well, I got married only one time, but those that being singers and musicians, or whatever, you do it for a lifestyle, for a living. But I only married. You know, saying the point I'm that, bringing it up day. is wedding music is not gospel music. That's secular it's not music. music. Okay. It's, it's the same thing. So we're not prostituting. So when you go to the secular side, do you do it for the more money? It, it's, 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 it's a, a job. job. <laughs> okay. okay, last one, Bishop. This is our last one. We're going to pray. Please don't leave without sowing a seed. I forgot the offering yesterday. Put them buckets at that door and put them to their face. <laughs> But I did learn something from you. Be nice to the people. I'm going to be nice. Sweetly. Put slide in front of you. No, I think you really helped the pastors and the churches that we have to treat people better. We have to be nice to people. People will do more for you if you are kind and build relationships. And don't take them for granted. Appreciate them. Celebrate them. Amen. Last one. Bishop Brock. Well, um, I only had church music at my wedding, but... Uh, so, uh, just to throw that out you there. You had church music in your bedroom at night? I'm talking about preach, at the preach, wedding. Preach, preach, And at, at the reception, I hired a DJ, so. But anyway. Um, I think what has happened, I think we've lost integrity in the church. And I think it's come from both sides. I think there are pastors that are lacking in, in integrity and I believe there are musicians that are lacking in integrity. And when I talk about integrity, I'm talking about doing exactly what you say you're going to do. I've heard horror stories on both sides. I've been a minister of music. I'm a pastor now. I've worked on both sides of this. If you're going to agree to pay someone something, you have to do what you say you're going to do. Honor your agreement. On the flip side, if you say you're going to perform a certain level of service, Perform that service. If you agree to come to a service at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the morning, be on time. We start on time. You show up on time. And 
at the end of the day, just because it's not a written agreement does not mean it's still not a contract. When you speak something out of your mouth, verbal. it's a verbal contract. Yeah. And it can hold up in a court of law. So what I say out of my mouth, even if it's not on paper, it's still my bond. And I think we have this, we're in this place in this space now where we don't, our words don't mean nothing. Our yay is, is not yay, and our nay is not nay. We say one thing, and we do another. And my final, my final thing is this. We asked the question about, someone asked the question about why in the world is the church, you know, what happened from 1980 to 2019? I blame the pastors. The pastors are allowing the musicians to run their churches. The pastors are allowing the musicians to dictate what happens in their churches. The pastors are allowing the price of, the, of what a musician charges to go up. We're adjusting to what the market says it ought to be rather than accommodating what our house is able to do. If your house is only able to afford $300 a week, then don't try to pay $500. Stick to what you have. Amen. And it's their obligation to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play for that or I'm not going to play for that. And my thing is, I don't have no problem with that. If you can't play for me for 300 fine, go ahead. Because the other thing is this. If another opportunity comes up, I already know you're going to leave for that other opportunity. And listen, I ain't mad at you for leaving. Go get your money. Because this ministry is not just ministry. It also is vocation. I'm, I'm an educated pastor. Pastor. If another church calls me to another church, oh, let me, oh, my, oh my church ain't watching. Oh, Jesus. Play the organ, son. Lord Play Jesus. something. I'm, I'm, done. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Oh, Jesus. Okay. But I really, really, really want to say this, and I'm going to let everybody in, but y'all give us one minute, and I want everybody to get a seed in your hands. Get a seed in your hands. Get a seed in your hands. If everybody can get a $30 seed, a $30 seed. You've had free classes all both days. Amen? How many were blessed in your classes? And I want to thank all of these. These are my friends. Some are sons and daughters. They did not charge us anything. They came volunteering today to help us. Can you celebrate every last one of them? And especially Pastor DeAndre Patterson. Amen? It is very important, pastors, that you have a relationship with your musicians and with your singers. That's very difficult. And sometimes when you play for four and five different churches, it's hard to build a relationship. Because what you do at one church is not right at another church. You got to spend time with people. Put your spirit in them. Let them know the oil of the house. Put the anointing that's on you upon them, or they will play a strange sound. What you can do at one church, you can't do it another church. You got to know the past and know the leader that God's glory and power can come forth. Amen. So as we get in our seeds and our hands, thank you all for coming. Clap your hands. You've been amazing. Everybody to get a $20 seed, a $30 seed. You can give by credit card. I want them uh, just staying with your offering. And we're going to close with each one of them giving us one minute, one minute. And Pastor DeAndre is going to pray and then we're going to take our seeds. Give us one minute. What do you got to say? To God be the glory for all the great things he has done. I love musicians. I love singers. As we continue to go forth, let's continue to do the work of the ministry. Um, again, I just would like the camaraderie to return between pastor and musicians. Uh, I believe it's been competitive. Uh, it's been argumentative. Uh, it's been confrontational. But it needs to be a camaraderie because when the pastor and musician come together, what a time. Uh, what an experience our people will have, and they will benefit from our gifts because, again, the people are supposed to be edified by what we bring to the table. Amen. I think it's an honor and a privilege to have an amazing relationship with your pastor. I've been privileged to be blessed to have an amazing relationship with the bishop that I serve under. So my prayer is that each musician, singer, even lay member, Get that relationship, even with even if you're a lay member, get a relationship with a musician because, like I said earlier, a smile, a hello changes how we view the sanctuary. It, it changes how we decide to come in and lead worship today. I may have been sick. I may have been hurt. But your hello has now changed the sound that I'm going to release to the house tonight. Wow, and I was thinking about unity and strength. So... Um, no matter what gift you have, or if you're a musician or a singer, make sure you are in the house hearing the word of God so that your gift can be sharpened wherever you use it. 
wherever you are, that light can be not dim, but very bright. And it's because of the knowledge that you have of Jesus Christ. Uh, we want to say thanks. Uh, this was good. I feel like we broke some good ground. Earlier, I didn't get a chance to mention anybody I play for. I uh, play for James Fortune. Uh, and I'm glad I play at two churches where I, whenever I need to go, you know, both pastors are real understanding. Like, they want to see me grow. And, you know, they give me opportunity to go out and, you know, expand myself and grow, you know, do things I want to do. And you say you play at the powerhouse. Uh, oh, I play at, <laughs> at 12 o'clock. I play at the powerhouse at 12 o'clock, and I play at a church called West Point Missionary Baptist Church at 10. I also play at my home church, uh, Evangelistic Praise House at 5. Now, this is Rico Strong. This is Rico. What's the long? What's your name? My son. Nichols. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes. Yes. He started at the powerhouse. Yes, I did. We changed our names. Yes, I did. He it didn't was Prayer and Faith Outreach Ministry. <laughs> it's the powerhouse He's, now. He said I played for Prayer and Faith. See, I'm we still calling this Prayer and Faith. So, but now, um, honestly, I just, I want to thank Bishop, honestly. Without Bishop, I wouldn't be who I am today. Like, honestly, I wouldn't be playing for who I'm playing for. I wouldn't know how to follow, you know, um, flowing and, you know, following leadership. So I really do appreciate you, you know, for teaching me. We love you and we're still Thank praying you. for him. He's in L.A. now. Yes, Amen. Yes, Curtis closes out. Well. Thank you for the opportunity, Bishop, yeah. and everybody on the panel. You know, it's, it was great today. Um, mine's not really a spiritual statement, but I just want to leave this with the pastors. You get what you pay for. I'm getting no better than that. <laughs> Pastor, come pray for us. We're going to get y'all out. So let's stand on our feet as the man of God prays for us.